There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. Good afternoon. Um, today we're going to look at another of these uh, early electric gramophone record pickups. And this is quite an important one. I haven't done it before because it wasn't working, but I've we fixed it and uh, we'll go through how we fixed it. And it's made by a company called Igranic, uh, which was a big company in the UK. Uh, from 1913 onwards, they made all sorts of stuff and carried on for many years. In the 20s, in the radio boom time, they made lots and lots of radio components. Um, and of course, sound reproduction from records was completely tied in with radio. And so this Igranic pickup is quite important. Yes, the uh, Igranic electric pickup was one of three um, that were reviewed in the Gramophone magazine, then a very important uh, magazine in the UK, which it still is. Uh, in September 1927, they reviewed three electric pickups, and as far as I know, they're the first advent of electric pickups uh, in this magazine in the UK, and they compared them and found that they were all pretty good, and they were all pretty expensive. And the um, the Igranic, f ow, bloody, sorry about that. Needles are sharp, you know. That like, that's not that's not intentional. I think I'll leave that in. Um, the Igranic Phonovox um, was one of them, and um, we tried it out the other day because we thought it's important. Um, and the uh, the coil when we measured the coil inside. That was fine, that was 1,800 ohms DC resistance, that's great. And so we set it up and we couldn't get a peep out of it. So we thought, well, it's got to come apart. Yes, I'm afraid we scientists are mad or otherwise, or always martyrs to our cause. And of course, it underlines that safety in the workroom must be our high priority at all times. Anyway, here's the device. Um, in all its splendour, the Phonovox, and there is a stub on the side which fits into the gramophone tone arm, because at that time there were only acoustic sound boxes, and these were new, so they fitted onto the gramophone in the same way as a sound box. So let's get inside it. Okay, we've taken the uh, works uh, out of its Bakelite uh, casing. It's a very well made thing, and um, here at the bottom, uh, where the needle screw goes, uh, we've got the bottom of the armature, which passes up through here where there's some suspension, through the big coil, and it emerges at the top uh, it, where it's flattened, and this is usually called the fishtail. And this is in between these two pole pieces of the horseshoe magnet here. Um, and straight away we can see that something's wrong. The fishtail has clicked over and is being held by this uh, pole piece here. So that's... Um, one of the reasons why it's not working so we're going to have to dismantle it fully but before we strip it down uh, we'll just have a look underneath it's up, sort of upside down now and look where, the, where where you see round where the needle holder is there is a black sort of ring and um, that's gone very hard that's the rubber suspension for the armature and it's not uncommon for rubber to go hard and petrified after 90 years <laughs> so uh, that's almost certainly what's happened here so here are the pieces and the uh, taking all the nuts and bolts out and carefully put them in a plastic tray so they won't fall on the floor. More on that anon. Um, but what about the armature? When we took the metal apart, um, all the rubber just fell apart. It's hopelessly brittle. You can scrunch it up with your fingers. And so we have to replace it. The rest of the armature, the shiny bit, that's lovely. That goes up through the coil. And the flat bit, of course, is the fish tail. So um, we need to make... Uh, a new suspension. Unfortunately with this armature it's extremely easy. Um, the bit where the suspension goes is actually square so what we've done is put a piece of bicycle valve rubber, uh, forced it on with Vaseline, down there um, so it's assumed the shape of a square and below it the red thing is a little piece of heat shrink sleeving which we put on over that and then uh, blew it with a heat gun and that shrank square as well so this was a really easy new suspension to make well that was easy peasy all we needed to do was uh, put it back together and we're home and dry 
um, and it's a very robustly made thing. It's a, it's a good piece of kit. Um, however, reassembling it is quite difficult because I've only got two arms. I think our granite might have used um, either two people or possibly an octopus to hold all the things together to get all the little fiddly teensy screws in with. And um, while I was fitting it back together, uh, it happened. Where has it gone? The thing. Oh. Oh, hello there. Um, yes, look. Uh, anybody who takes little things to pieces will be familiar with this phenomenon. It's just happened. Uh, you unscrew a nut and it falls down onto the carpet and you see it hit the carpet. You know exactly where it went and yet when you get on your hands and knees it's nowhere to be seen. And I've just dropped a nut from something I'm working on which I shall sh show you in a minute um, and it completely went and not only that it was a very unusual sized nut a 5BA which you know is believe take it from me it's uncommon and I haven't got any um, so what I did is I took the other one because it's a pair and I deliberately dropped it on the floor and watched it and I dropped it ten times and it never moved it never, it always landed within about eight or nine inch radius. But the one I dropped here has got, gone, it went somewhere like, it's, I'm still looking for it, but uh, bear with me, will you? Sorry. It couldn't be this one down here. Ah! Oh joy! I found it! I found it! Well, disaster was narrowly averted and here you see we've got it all back together and the fishtail is here uh, in the centre or more or less in the centre of these two pole pieces. And of course that's where the magnetic flux is concentrated and when the needle moves on the record the armature which is pivoted as you know um, what wobbles the, 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 the fishtail and that causes a disruption in the magnetic flux between the two pole pieces and that uh, change of magnetic flux induces a voltage in this big coil here and that's how uh, moving iron pickups work and they uh, remained in use they got gradually more sophisticated but they remained in use for many years that's it then we're uh, all ready to go to play the record back um, it does work the sounds a little bit whiny I think the bicycle valve rubber is a little bit too floppy um, the perished rubber of course was too stiff so that's no good but if you have a damping or suspension which is too wobbly, uh, then the, the, um, you might get some resonances in the armature. Uh, but it does work, and um, have a listen. And we've picked a record uh, from uh, 1928. Yes, it's uh, Jack Payne, it's BBC Dance Orchestra playing Sweet Sue. Quite a nice record. Not the world's best copy, but uh, let's see what we make of it. Uh, and of course, it will, you'll hear it through the PC, not through the speakers of the camera. Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you.